DoorDash laid off 6% of its company staff, 1,250 people. Facebook laid off 11,000 of its employees, 13% of its, of its workforce. Same month, Twitter laid off 3,700 employees. September of 2022, Snapchat, 1,300 individuals gone. Zillow, a month before that, 300 employees gone. 2023, it continues with IBM, 3,900 individuals gone. Spotify, 400 individuals gone. Google, 12 thousand employees laid off microsoft ten thousand laid off amazon eighteen thousand worldwide centers gone and they're more planned for 2023 welcome to the good life welcome to another episode of the good life visual audio podcast i'm one of your hosts c muzan i got could be coach here in the building. Say what up, bro. What up, though? In the building. In That's the building. Right. That's right. Pardon the raspy voice, guys. I'm getting my voice back. I lost my voice a couple of days ago, but we're here. So I got the Jada kiss going, the raspy voice. <laughs> 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 Yep, definitely in our 30s, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Jada Kiss. Kiss to death. Mwah. 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 That's it. But uh, how you been, man? How was your week? Been good. Solid. Chopping wood. As you guys know, just staying consistent, kind of doing the same things over and over again with work, working out, home. Nothing too major as I get a little accent as I say that. Uh, out of uh, out, nothing too out of the ordinary this week, just kind of just consistently about chopping wood, man. How about you? Uh, same, same. In all honesty, I feel like this is a superpower. I was thinking of this earlier this week about having a routine. A routine I can stick to gives me like just great joy and pleasure and like clarity and foundation like I just I feel good to be in a routine some people need like all types of yeah stimulants and different things and I'm just like man really looking forward to hitting the gym tomorrow morning and just doing my thing really looking forward to just knocking out this right these trainings at this time like I just I'm so excited just by having a routine that I'm okay with the what some people would call the mundane because it's a routine that I've created. Some people might hate their routine because it's a routine that was given to them, like AKA a job or, you know, school or whatever the case is. But like, I created this routine and I really enjoy it and it helps me, it helps me stay sane. So. Now, let me ask you, you know, uh, obviously we have different folks, people who like routine, people who don't like it for whatever reason, right? Some people just, don't like doing the same things all of all, all, all the time, regardless of if they created it or not. And others need to do the same thing over and over again. Otherwise, they go insane with all the different things that pop up. Does it matter, you know, doing the same thing over and over again if you're kind of um, seeing some sort of like movement? And what I mean by that is some sort of progression, some sort of like thing that's happening slowly because. Uh, or or does it not matter to you, right? Because you it's just routine. It is what it is. You do what you do. Or do you need to like, you know, for example, routine with your workout? Like you see like a little, a little progress each time. Routine with your, you know, your 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 schedule as an entrepreneur. You see like business being done a little bit. How important is that progress or movement for you in terms of actually enjoying your routine? It's a really good question, man. It's a really good question. I again speaking from the eye. I think I've conditioned myself to not have to look at the progress or to not need the progress to know that the routine helps me continue to chop wood, so to speak, right? And just, just keep hammering away. I do have an end in mind, right? There's an end goal, obviously, right? Not just doing a routine mindlessly to get through the day, not doing it mindlessly to right, just just do it. I'm doing it because there is an end in mind. I know that going to the gym will get me to the place of strength that I want to be, that we've talked about, but I don't necessarily need to see the progress. Mm. I, I don't necessarily, need, I know it's getting me there. 
because I know that if I'm doing the right things and working hard at it and continuing to stay consistent at it, I'm just a believer that wh whatever I'm trying to get to will come. I don't have to see the progress. I don't have to see the progress in business. This is actually a kind of a, it could be a fault of mine. I don't often look for the progress. I don't often measure the progress. I don't often pat myself on the back or right, applaud a lot of things because I'm just in the work. I'm just in the work. And I, uh, I, think, I think there's power in that. And again, I can see the other side as well. I can see the other side that people need to see progress in order to make the routine more, more comfortable for them, or they need to get positive feedback or positive reinforcement in doing the thing. But I think if you just have, you know, the way I, I'm, I'm wired, if I just have an end goal and I know that's what I'm headed towards and doing these things will eventually get me there. I call that a level of patience, right? <laughs> like, to just stick with the formula and just stick with what, what, what's going to work. So I would also call it a man of faith. You know, you walk, walk by faith and not by sight. And mm -hmm. uh, I say that because uh, a key component of what I just heard you say was, a, was an element of, uh, of, of belief or trust in the system. Um, and for peop some people uh, at times myself, I need, it needs some sort of feedback. It doesn't have to be positive. Hmm. But some sort of feedback as in like, are we on the right track? Right. Are, 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 are things moving like it should be moving? Oh, yeah. OK, cool. Head back down. Let's work for a little bit. Still good. All right, cool. Head back down and work for a little bit. Um, and some people need that a lot more. And others, it sounds like yourself, don't need that at all. They just trust that the system is, is moving forward and, and, yeah. and they're completing what they need to complete and things will work out for the best. Absolutely. And again, I think you can find success in both areas. I, the other side, I don't understand fully the needing the constant change. I don't know how you get to where you need to go. If it's like, I need to some, some weeks I do this and some weeks I'll do this and then I get tired of this and then I go here and then I need to switch it up. And then like, I I don't I don't fully understand that side. Maybe somebody can help me with that side. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's an interesting point. I was just watching a show about uh, I think it was like masters, people who are masters of the, whatever it is that they do. Mm -hmm. And there was two individuals, both designers, all uh, right, and their process was completely different. Mm -hmm. One was com was just like methodical, right? Was A F B C D like very methodical very clean, very, everything was just like, um, I wouldn't say robotic, but very much, you know, uh, 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 finding the pattern and following the pattern. The other one was all over the place. She's mm -hmm. like, if I show up to my office and I have to sit there for more than like five, 10 minutes to do no, no, no. I hate that. I, I like to, I like to be all over the place, getting into people's work, you know, uh, making a little comment here and there. Like, I like to be moving and have, you know, I like to be interrupted, right? When I'm in the middle of something, I interrupt to ask a question and I can solve it real quick and go like, you know, she just likes to be in this like, you know, chaotic, what appears to be a chaotic dance. Right. Teach his own, man. I guess, I guess that works. I would, I, I would... And I don't know how, you know, the show you're referencing or anything. I'm not sure how long they were in their craft work, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, I would 30, 40 plus years. And, you know, I, I would say like, are, are they, where do they measure up? Are they at the same level? Cause if so, or they're both about masters of it, then, you know, to each yeah. his own, like I said, everyone has a different learning style. Everyone has a different style of, of performing, so to speak. So, Hey, if, yes, it works, sir. if it works for you, it works for you, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Anyway, brother, uh, two got a, two. I was, I was going to say, first off, you got a Detroit fact. No, listen, I was going to let Detroit breathe today, man. Let, we, but... can't, we, we can't let Detroit breathe. If, <laughs> if, you don't have, if, if you don't have one, I have one. I saw one. Uh -oh. I, think I, I think I might have sent it to you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, on Instagram, I saw this, right? Oh, I for, did, man, did, yeah. I forget the name of the group, so I'm not going to be able to get it. But either way, there's a group of, of, of black men in the city of Detroit uh -oh. that are covering women 
specifically black women, by pumping their gas and watching them when they're at gas stations at night. Right? Stand up, gentlemen. Stand up, guys. Being out there, protecting queens, protecting women that are out there, right? Around with all the randomness that happens. They're saying, you know what? We're going to protect them and we're going to make sure their gas gets pumped. We're going to make sure that they get escorted into and out of stores late at night so that, uh, yeah, so that there's some protection. Wow. Brothers of the new era. There it is. Detroit. There it is. Where would you find that other than the great city of Detroit, huh? See, this huh? is what I'm talking about, man. Look at the quality. The quality of individuals, man. Giving up. They're not getting paid. You know, they're not getting paid for this. It's just, it's just goodness out of their heart. Looking out for how do I make my neighbor better? Mm. I, I, you know, how, how do I make my neighborhood better? How do mm. I look? See, this is the type of brotherhood you don't really see in other parts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shut up, Detroit. God, it, Listen, man, if they turn up the temperature a little bit in Detroit, I'll be living there. All right? <laughs> if they turn it up just a little bit, tad too cold for more. Listen, global warming's a real thing, right? So you never know. Uh, you, you never know. Let's not get canceled. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment. But uh, shout out. With bottom line is shout out Detroit. Right. Brothers of the new era, we see you. And uh, as you set this example, the rest of this country will look to the great city of Detroit for leadership, right? For examples of how we can rise up in our community <laughs> and be examples, right? For our sons and our daughters and people that are growing up, man. God. People Dana's, of Detroit, stand up. Dana, Dana's in our comments bashing the city of brotherly love. I'm not going to let you bash wait, Philadelphia. Wait, Philadelphia? Dana. Yeah. I said, let's go, Dana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dana knows. He, hey, Dana. Dana, you will never find that in Detroit. Am I right? I mean, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Philadelphia. You will never find that in Philadelphia. Am I right? Yes, you will. Yes, we uh, will. We're I'm here. Still looking. We're around. I'm We're still around. looking, man. I'm anyway. still looking. God Anyways, bless the birds. God bless the birds. Go birds. Uh, Although they will drop in the Super Bowl, but that's all right. They they will not. By the time people hear this, because some of you are watching it live, by the way, you're going to get it first, but some of you might not see this until the recording. So you it the, the, the Eagles will have already won the Super Bowl by the time that you hear this. Mm. But for those of you that are watching right now, the Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl, just so you know. Oh, oh interesting. Oh, you uh, want to want to wager something on this? Let's talk about it, man. I'm all ready. Right, well, all right, we'll get a wager. We'll get a wager doing right <laughs> off the bat. Send us Dana. You're listening to this. Others who are listening <laughs> to this live. What should the wager be when the birds are cooked? Oh, in the Super Bowl. It's not happening. I'll I'll wager whatever. Let's put some things in the chat. Let's see. Let's see. Let's what we see. Get. Yeah. Let's see what we what get. should the wager be? Is it a hundred push-ups? <laughs> You know, is it 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 a a a, a, a watch? Mm. Right? Is it a is it a new sound button? Oh. Ooh. What should it be here? I mean, I think I, I, I man, this is a good opportunity right here for me to get a new pair of shoes or something. <laughs> I got to start thinking about what I actually need. What I actually need, and I'll let you know. I'll let right, you know. I could use a jacket. It's cold. Uh, even in a, <laughs> shoot, I'm cool, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. I'm in LA, but it's still cold. All right. Y'all calm down. What? It's 50? It's 50 degrees out there? Nah, man. It's 55. It's nippy. See? Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> too much. On to, our, on to the two by two. Two by two. Again, this is the segment of the show where we could be in myself, take a topic, give you our two minute take on that topic today we are talking about egg prices mm. egg prices mm. i'm seeing a lot of memes out there and a lot of people making jokes about eggs being the new drugs right pack it packaging up the packaging up the eggs making sure you're keeping your eggs safe because there's they're worth a lot these days but some stats say that egg prices rose 60% in 2022. 60% price of eggs jumped up. Some of you might be seeing this. But there's a couple different takes on this. Some people are saying that there's a deadly outbreak of the bird flu 
and it's compounded so much that it's killed a bunch of birds, killed a bunch of chickens, and they're not going to produce eggs. So that's why the supply and demand, right, is off. And now the eggs have skyrocketed. But there's another group of people that are saying that this is a scheme. This is some collusion where the industry, uh, uh, the leaders in, in eggs uh, in the industry, the largest egg producers, got together and basically said, hey, we're going to start price gouging just to make sure we're making some profits. And over the last 26 weeks, eh, the egg prices have gone up 10 times, which has put more money into their pockets. What are your thoughts on this, man? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. We have a problem. This is a problem that we've been uh, highlighting for a very long time here on The Good Life. And uh, let me state it plainly. Uh, we need to get closer to our food for a lot of reasons, and this is one of them. Now, I'm not going to take sides between uh, the two groups on one saying this is done intentionally, so essentially control the price of, 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 of eggs, and the other saying that it's uh, some sort of flu that's been taking it, that's been, you know, killing uh, the producers of eggs. Shout out to the chickens. Um, <laughs> for me, the one thing that's that's I think highlighted here is that we're not close enough to our food source. We don't know what's happening. It used to be a time, there was a time in history uh, right here in this very country uh, where every family owned chickens, they owned cows, they, 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 they grew their own food. So not only did they know where it was coming from, if there was a flu, they knew. If there was something wrong, they knew. They also had a greater connection to the food and greater appreciation for the food. But now, not only do we have, you know, talk of egg prices being somewhat, you know, controlled naturally or unnaturally, but we also have fake eggs that are being mm. produced. And they've been, this has been out since like for, you know, there's stories out from 2018, 2017 of fake eggs being a major issue. Uh, in India, in China, and uh, guess what? I highly doubt that uh, the United States is just good old pure eggs are being produced here, right? Uh, a lot of these eggs are very hard to tell the difference between the two, uh, but obviously they're not as good for you as natural eggs. And I think this is um, a microcosm for the entire food story that's happening globally, and, and, and you know, let's speak to the United States here. Our food source uh, has been under attack. And I'll, I'll speak directly to the trainers and the coaches and the, who, and the nutritionists. And we're like, you know, just eat normal, real, good food. Well, if we're having a situation where from the source of the food all the way to the plate, there's so many things that can go wrong to the point where even if I wanted to pay for really good, high quality, natural eggs, I may end up with something that's fake. Huge problem, huge problem. And it throws in a lot more than just, uh, you know, counting calories and tracking macros. Now the quality of our food is actually under question. <sighs> that's huge. Normally I might have a, a, a another take or an opposite take on it, but I got to stick in the same vein as what you're saying right now. We just have no idea where our food is coming from. And it's the real problem. As I was thinking about this, I'm like, bird flu, like, how would I have ever heard of this? Like, who knows? Who knows if that's even true? Like, who even knows? Like, we don't have how do you farm. verify this? Yeah, how do you verify this information? Just because it comes from like the government's website or whatever, like how do we verify that this is actually what happened? And so this is the real problem. Right now we're talking about eggs and obviously I can right, correlate this back to money. It's going to hurt your pockets. We've been talking, we talked about inflation, but now, right, just the consumption of eggs. It's not like people are going to stop using eggs. So it's going to, it's going to cut into your budget, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to up your food costs, restaurants, all these things are going to start happening. It's going to affect your money, right? This is just the first or not even really the first thing because produce has gone up like crazy, right? I, well, I went to Texas this past weekend and I saw watermelons in Houston that were $6.99 or $5.99. And up here where I am in Northeast PA, 
They're ten dollars. The same watermelon, just it came from a different spot, right? So it's going to affect your pockets one way or the other. But I think the real conversation is we have like, do we even know <laughs> if it's real food, if it's it where it comes from, what we're actually putting into our bodies? Again, this is the good life. We're supposed to be talking about health, wealth, mindset, love, happiness, all the things that get us to a good life. If we don't even know where our food is coming from, it doesn't matter. Like could be said, it doesn't matter how much we're trying to count calories or macros or whatever the case is. Like we don't even know where it comes from. And that's the disturbing part. Whether it is for corporate greed or whether there wasn't, there's an actual bird flu that wiped out the chickens. We just have no idea. And it's another area where we're in the dark and we really got to get a hold on this thing. We'll see. We'll see. Um, um, I'm hopeful, but uh, I'm also cautious. I just can't wait to have our own farm. Like, that's really, the, I just can't wait. Like, it's just, it's just, it's going to be the goal, <laughs> right? Like, there's no way to get around this. We have to get back to sourcing our own food. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, while people are realizing this, I think um, others, names who will not be named today, are figuring this out like 10 years ago, and they've been buying farmland aggressively. So mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I'll figure that out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Man, little guy, little guy always is uh, 10 steps behind. That's it. Right? 10 steps behind with the information while y'all were out here doing trucking and real estate. <laughs> Serious. Yeah, you saw that? That was, man, for those who didn't, for those who haven't cut, uh, uh, caught this, this was like, I'll say for the last five, 10 years. This has been like the thing to do as an entrepreneur. Get your trucking company and a, a freaking, uh, 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 you know, make sure you go knock on a million doors to buy you, trick somebody into selling you some real estate, right? That's it, man. There's a lot of good. A lot of people have made a good amount of money. And um, you know what's interesting, though? Most of the people that I could point to are not in what I would consider wealthy markets. Right. They're in like North Carolina, South Carolina, Atlanta, like mm -hmm. places like that, maybe parts of Texas, all right, or whatnot. I, I hardly ever hear of any folks coming from that, you know, this era of like everybody getting into real estate from like New York or right. San Francisco or LA or, uh, or uh, e even, you know, just the, the top of the top. They, I don't see any of that at all. Yeah, because it wasn't attainable. That's why, right? And I often tell people real estate was one of those things that they let let people into. They just let let you in, right? It's like, hey, you can go do this side. But, man, should have been paying attention to the farm. Right? Should have been paying attention to the chicken market. The so good old land in general. Land in general, yeah, absolutely, right? I know that's that's something you're big on, right? Just getting back to land, gold, silver, good old chickens, <laughs> chicken. Listen, chickens, I, cows. What's next, man? I wish I had a beat on like the oranges market or the right, whatever the next thing is. And hey, don't get into the avocado right? market. You're gonna be oh. fighting the cartel. <laughs> <laughs> no, you actually probably would be though. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. No, no, for real. Mexico's got a lock on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, don't do that now. Don't do it. Um, into our topic today. Topic, layoffs. What yes. to do? What to do if you are in fear of getting laid off or you've been laid off? Because they're coming and they've been happening. I don't know if you see the statistics on your side. Could be oh, yeah. if you have it. Um but give the people a couple of these statistics around um, around layoffs because a lot – I mean, you sent me an article a little bit ago about all these tech layoffs just happening back to back to back to back to back. Yeah, it's right? horrible. Yeah. I'm it's a, horrible. Uh, I'm a, I'm a Gary V, you know, fan to a degree where uh, – I, I mean, I watch him for some business stuff. And I remember he did a – what he calls a four D's, right? Where he talks to other 
business like it's basically like small to medium sized business coaching right like just in group coaching and this was maybe hmm, four months ago three months ago i saw him do one and the guy was talking about not having enough employees or not yeah not having enough employees or people that he needed and he was like and gary straight face was like don't worry about it come second quarter of next year give it another six months or so you have people lining up knocking on your door it's like he just said it real casually as if like he just knew this was gonna happen but like it's it's really happening like oh it's happening people are getting laid off left and right yeah. left and right yeah it, it's really bad i mean we we could go forever but uh on november 30th of 2022 you know, DoorDash laid off 6% of its company staff, 1,250 people. Meta, obviously Facebook laid off in the same month, uh, 11,000 of its employees, 13% of its, of its workforce. Uh, same month, Twitter laid off 3,700 employees. Um, the, 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 then in the, uh, September of 2022, Snapchat, 1,300 individuals gone, Zillow, you know, a month before that, 300 employees gone. I mean, we, we keep going. 2023, it continues with IBM, 3,900 individuals gone. Spotify, 400 individuals gone. Um, Google, 12,000 employees laid off, oh um, gone. Microsoft, 10,000 laid off. Amazon, uh, 18,000 worldwide centers gone. Uh, Salesforce, you know, gone as well, uh, or 7,000 jobs have been dropped there. So, I mean, there, and they're more planned for 2023. So it, it, it is, it is a rough, rough year. Uh, and to your point, uh, I think those who are in decision, uh, making, uh, positions have been kind of seeing this and calling this for a very long time. I've been around individuals who are in those type of positions in their company, and they've been giving me the heads up for a while, even before then, you know, the type of uh, industry uh, 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 individuals that I've been listening to and just kind of keep a tab on things that are going on have been calling for this really since uh, the beginning of the lockdowns uh, in, in, in 2020 uh, and even end of 2019. Uh, I, I remember listening to a few quote unquote insiders that predicted, you know, this type of stuff to be happening within the next three to five years of it being a really, really down season. Uh, I don't know what the term would be for having three to five years of, of, of this sort of hardship. Uh, but bottom line is people are struggling. People that we know, uh, individual, personal basis. Uh, and, and then the, I think the community as a whole, uh, local communities, and then even the uh, greater, you know, United States and global community, um, is definitely in a very tough position. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is the time, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time to start to pay attention to some, some things. And those of you that have been, you know, longtime followers and listeners here on the good life, you know, from a financial standpoint, my message always remains the same. It's about making sure you have a solid financial foundation. And this is the time if to pay attention to some foundational things in your finances. So yeah. foundational things, especially if, you know, you are thinking about getting laid off or, you know, you're thinking you have a potential to get laid off. It's coming near close to your industry or you see your company's revenue or right. Your sales are going down or things are getting slower, right? If you start to feel those things, there's some things you got to do financially to make sure that you are on the right path. On, uh, on the right track. Number one, as I just throw out a couple things here, or, you know, I throw out one thing for you, uh, start looking at your money. Again, those of you that have been listening to, to us, you've heard me say this multiple, multiple times, but I still sit down with people on a daily basis that do not actively look at their money. They do not actively see exactly what's coming in and what's going out. They don't really know. They they know how much money they might be coming might be coming in from their job, but they really don't know where it's going. They have an idea. They have a ballpark. They know they got a little habit, 
They know their bills are kind of high, but they don't actually look at their money. This is the time, ladies and gentlemen. If you are, if you are in any arena, any any uh, area where you think you may get laid off, go start looking at your money. Go pull a bank statement. Go onto your online banking. Look at January. Right, we just got through a month of January. Go look at January. Take the first to the thirty first, and look at the spending. Look at the spending. Just start to become aware of it. Start to become familiar with it. Where is that money going? If you do three months, you'll get real good insight for your own habits, right? If you look back three months, if you look at November, December, and January, and December is always a weird month because people got gifts and families and travel, right? So December is sometimes an anomaly, but it's an anomaly at the same time every year, right? (laughs) Because every December is probably in the same ballpark for you, right? So, but you're going to want to look at it now going to start paying attention to it because that's going to now help you just become more aware of your money. So in the event you get laid off, you know exactly what your expenses are. In the event that you get laid off and there's all the other things going on in your life that are causing you some of the things we'll talk about later, right? Some of the stressful things, you know exactly how much your monthly bills are. You know exactly how much you pay for certain you know, miscellaneous items, you know exactly what you can start cutting out immediately before you get back on track. You already know it. You're not scrambling in the time of crisis to do those things. So that's, that's my first step as far as some foundational things, thinking about getting laid off. What are your thoughts on that, man? Makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Hopefully you've been listening uh, to Chris for a couple of years now and you've uh, built that foundation. Um, and you, you you kind of put yourself in a place where this will be a temporary inconvenience or a very painful inconvenience, but it's not something that's going to uh, take wipe out you or your family. Uh, that is our hope um, because there's a uh, multiple components of this. Uh, and I think the first one is to make sure that you still got a roof over your head, uh, food on the table for the family. Uh, and, um, you know, you can go ahead and take care of the fundamentals so you can live to fight another day. And uh, I think that's number one, number, number one right there. So I I think you, you've been hitting on the fundamentals for a long time. Um, for some people, they, they listen and and take the action and for others, you know, they kind of need a little shakeup to remind them that the reality, uh, of the, of the situation. Um, but I think we'll speak on this as well, too, for those who maybe didn't adhere uh, to your fundamental elements that you've been, um, you know, speaking on for a long time uh, and are in that place. I'm sure we'll give them a few things that they can start to do to to stop the bleeding. But before, you know, before we even get to the component of talking about some of the mental, uh, emotional and, and, uh, you know, very much physical manifestations of the level of stress that's induced by losing our uh, source of income. Um, I think it's, 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 it's critical that, you know, if you're not there yet, you start prepping. Cause I think, I think we're just getting started mm. all these layoffs and, and things. I think we're just getting started. We're hitting us. We're hitting some part of the cycle, whatever words you want to use. Um, And it feels to me uh, like this is going to be um, bigger, like Mm -hmm. a lot bigger. And I say bigger, um, I can relate it, you know, on my tender age, I can relate it to, um, you know, 2008 Mm -hmm. uh, is the one I can remember. Uh, And it feels like this is going to be not just a sector of the economy, uh, but this is going to be global. Mm. This feels like it's going to be global. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. Shout out, shout, shout out to Jeremy. That's tech. Hey, brother Nate. <laughs> we appreciate you, brother. And he's right, man. The tech industry is going through it right now. It, they're going through it, right? And what's funny is this is kind of reminiscent of, uh, I think I, I had a conversation with someone else and talked about um, how manufacturing jobs went away in this country and really haven't come back Mm. right these tech layoffs Mm -hmm. i I don't know that they're coming back 
if, if if these things get outsourced, if they become something where you could get twice the work done for half the price, yeah, as in what they did with manufacturing and moving everything to China and moving everything to other places, yeah, it's not coming back. Mm-mm. It's not coming back, right? And that's why this feels bigger than right anything that we maybe have seen but it also yeah. re- reminds me a lot of this the manufacturing side of things yeah well you know we we have like uh what i would call local and a global economic uh crisis that's taking place right we have local in the sense of like jobs etc but we also have a global in terms of like like the entire global economy as we know it is shifting be- between you know beneath our feet mm-hmm. we we've talked about this before uh, in terms of, you know, on a much more macro level, uh, you know, individuals like Ray Dalio have spoken on this, that there is a shift in on a very macro level that's taken place. And uh, a lot of these shifts, you know, shout out Reaganomics, are going to take some time to trickle down um, or trickle up, however you want to put it, for the whole uh you know fabric of the of the of the, of the community to like really feel what's happening mm-hmm. because what we're feeling now are again are things that i was hearing about a couple of years ago a year two years three years ago and now we're feeling it. the stuff we talked about with the eggs and the food in general people have been talking about food food shortage and food prices skyrocketing for a while now now we're feeling it all right um and and and, and there's it's Obviously, the thing we're focused on is being laid off. But the other piece is that uh, individuals are keeping their job, doing the same level of work, if not more. And companies are finding ways to, you know, make sure that they preserve their company profits while taking money out of the out of the pockets of the employees. This is something that we're seeing, particularly in high paid jobs, right, where you might be getting big bonuses and uh, things of that nature. Uh, what 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 we're seeing now is companies finding reasons, right, to to take a little of those things off the table. Obviously, maintaining that their higher level executives still get what they need to get, so they're, they 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 slowly strip from the lower tier, right. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, you know, there's a lot of people who are maybe uh, underemployed right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people who are doing more work but receiving less pay. Uh, yep. And additionally, that pay is not going as far, right? So so now not, not only do you have a local, and that's what I mean, local crisis, but global crisis as well, is that that money is not, you know, the purchasing power is eroding. And um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. It's a um, very, very tricky time. And that's why we're doing this episode. That's right. That's right. It is a tricky time. Not to mention, again, we can dive into it. The stress level, the stress that comes with thinking about these things, the stress oh, that yeah. comes with feeling, fearing that you're going to get laid off, the stress that comes with um, having to find new work or new employment. There is physical, mental, emotional things that people are going to go through so one of the tips and one of the things we can we can kind of encourage everyone to do is take care of your health during these times. Take care of your mental, physical, and emotional health during these times. Learning how to manage stress better, to eliminate it if possible, but there's always going to be stressful situations, but learning how to manage those things. What are some things that people can do? Could be... Um, start with the physical side if you want to but what are some things people can be focused on right now to kind of lower that stress i know we've talked about it before yeah i appreciate you bringing that piece up because i think it's incredibly important uh if we don't have our sense of peace um you know what do we really have even if we have a lot of money um i think this is one that regardless of your position you can take control of right now um three things i'll give out three areas of focus uh you may recognize them for a mother podcast uh, but number one, let's start with our food, right? Um, it, it, it may seem like the thing to do when money is in a crunch is to peel back on um, quality and uh, try to just get like 
quantity in. Um, all right, I'm going to go stop shopping at the farmer's market, for example, and go to McDonald's because $5 here at McDonald's might get me more than more quantity. Uh, but that quality, the lack of quality in the long term will, will steal your peace. Mm -hmm. It will steal your peace. Um, and I'm not saying go hungry. I'm just saying, um, you know, feeding your body with with uh, with with low quality food is, is, is not helpful if it can be at all avoided. Right. So uh, and the thing is, the truth of the matter, as as is uh, maybe we need to go shopping here to show you guys this to be true. Uh, but you actually don't need to spend as much on good quality food if you know what you're looking for, number one, and if you clean up your physical uh, body and the things that you're doing with the food as well. Because not only is it the food itself, but it's also how we prepare it, how we eat it, how we go about dealing with it. All of that stuff can have a major impact uh, in terms of short term anxiety, depression, uh, medium term, uh, things like insulin resistance, things like our blood sugar levels, which can go uh, up and down, our insulin levels, uh, uh, um, blood pressure, those are those things of that nature. They will cost us more in the long term, right? If we if we try to take shortcuts now. So that's number one is uh, revisiting the quality. I would say more than even anything else, it's like try to have the quality of the food that you intake be one of the last things to go, mm. right? Try to have the quality of the things that you intake uh, be one of the last things to go. Sacrifice other places to maintain the quality of the food that you eat. That's mm. number one. That's good to know because normally people would go the other direction. You already know that, yeah. right? So that makes yeah. sense. That makes yeah. sense. Go local. Go local. That's one of the things that I found find these groups uh or these you know something like uh you know we're not sponsored by this but something like a butcher box get you high quality meat at a good price uh that if you take care of will take you very far uh as opposed to you know buying some trash off the you know some low quality stuff that's not going to help you number two um and this can be free you know, if you have, if you, if you money is truly a problem, you've been fired or whatnot, send me a message. Uh, you know, I'll help you out with this for free. Just to give you a blueprint. Uh, something that you can do is uh, 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 keep moving, movement, mm -hmm. right? Great, great therapist. You know, my favorite therapist, my longest lasting therapist uh, has been exercise, right? Touching some weights, doing some resistance training can greatly improve, you know, our mental capacity, our ability to handle stress, uh, right? So not just looking to decrease the stress, but our capacity for stress. Uh, I mean, it can go a long, long way and you don't have to spend much money. There's a lot of people that are out in the playgrounds doing calisthenics and doing fant getting fantastic uh, mental, physical, and emotional results. That's, that's number two, right? So maintain the quality of your food, uh, make sure that you're move, you're still moving. If you need help with either one of those at no cost uh, because you're in a tough position with your family, et cetera, or have lost your job, it's something that we offer to our, uh, we'll offer to our people that are listening to this right now. Hit me up um, and I'll be more than happy to assist you uh, if you've lost your job at no cost. Um, number three, I would say is lifestyle, right? So, you know, at, once you've lost your job, I was talking to a buddy of mine who'd lost his job yesterday. And one of the things that uh, we were talking about is, you know, he's taken the correct mindset approach, in my opinion, which is taking it as an opportunity to clean up the things that he had let go when he was comfortable collecting them checks. That's good. Right. Clean up his routine. Clean up when he's watching TV, when he's not. Clean up uh, alcohol use, substance use. Clean up. You know, just kind of just clean things up. You know, we all need it at times. Just kind of clean things up, bring himself back uh, to a place, you know, where he has renewed energy, renewed hunger. Um, and it's been really good for him in that sense. Right. Uh, and and, and he's, in, he's in a good place as a result of that. So number one, food, as always. Number two, movement, as always. Number three, lifestyle. Um, and, you know, if you again, if you need help with any of those, more than happy to help. That's so awesome. 
That's awesome. Those those three things will take you so far for everybody that's listening. That lifestyle piece is important. It's important. It's uh, <clears throat> I think you said this offline. I think we were having a conversation. You, you called like layoffs a breakup. I think I think you had mentioned. Oh yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah. Instead of breakup, but it but it's such a great analogy because you know <laughs> it's funny. I was thinking of this at the gym a couple of weeks ago. Like when people get divorced, or they break up with like their significant other? Why does like inevitably one or both of them like get better in life like <laughs> they they like drop a bunch of weight they yeah. become more personable they look happier like it's because that breakup that cha- it changes everything right it changes the habits it changes the, like how you're operating and so then people start moving in a different direction and losing a job getting laid off is a breakup it's like it's breaking up with your employer it's breaking up with that check that you were getting so that's like the perfect time to then start to change some things change some things in the lifestyle like you said check back in with yourself clean up clean up some of the habits that you built right maybe obviously happy hour is not going to be a thing <laughs> right like you're not worrying about getting off on friday or wednesday at five o'clock to get to happy hour that whole thing you know that that whole mindset shifts a bit perfect time to do those things yeah during that transition period of having the breakup from your job so that's important it's funny you mentioned that man we know our three greatest teachers are heartbreak empty pockets and failures so that really definitely fits and and, and, and take one of these things these can be you know elevators they can either take you up or they can bring you down. That's right. I like that. I like those three. Uh, give you guys another another tip of kind of what you should be thinking about or how you could be thinking about things um, or what you could be doing if you're experiencing a layoff or these these stressful things. Go and network with some people. Mm. Go, and, go and shake some new hands. Go get around some new people. Right. Very similar to that lifestyle conversation of you're probably in a certain lifestyle because you're doing the same things because you're around the same people, either at your job, at your place of business. Right. Or just whatever you were doing on your time off. But now if you have some time open, instead of, you know, just burying yourself in stress and worry, go make some new associations, go have some new conversations. And I think I put out some content about this a while back, but like, you know, shaking hands and open, right. And having new conversations, it, it opens up doors for opportunities. You get a chance to get some insight on some things. Maybe you meet your next employer. Maybe you ne- meet your next business partner. Maybe those types of things alleviate stress and bring you more energy and get your mind to open up a bit more because you hear what other people are doing or have going on. Oftentimes though, we do the opposite. Oftentimes we get laid off. We're in a bad place mentally. We're not managing our emotions properly. So we sink back in. We sit at home, right? We, 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 we sit on the couch more. We move our body less. We do less of those things. And so you got to push against it. You should go out there and be shaking hands with people. Try to figure out kind of where other people are, not necessarily just at the bar, right? But at, you know, other other places where you can find higher associations or associations with people that will raise your um, your vibration, so to speak, right? I think that's going to be a good one for for people uh, because our natural behavior is going the other direction typically. Yeah, yep, yep. Nothing to add to that, brother. I think that's spot on. It's huge. It's huge. So outside of networking, uh, we already kind of talked about take, taking care of yourself. Uh, obviously on the financial side, paying attention to the, the, the financial things. Uh, I'll add in the other part of the finance part, which is maybe you should be thinking about how to start creating your own income, right? Getting laid off means you are dependent on a job. Again, we're not here to just bash jobs. I'm not, I'm not a, there's a time and place to have a job. And again, Plenty of people make a great lifestyle for themselves having a job from an entrepreneur and someone that has an entrepreneur mindset. The fact that you could get laid off terrifies me. (laughs) That's the point, right? Like the fact that you could work somewhere for 20 years and be great at what you do 
and they could let you go. The fact that mm -hmm. we could hit a recession and have some things happen in the industry that you thought was foolproof and you get laid off and your income goes from 200,000 down to zero. That's a major shock. And it could come at any time. It could come at any time. I understand we all feel like our jobs are relatively secure, but we're watching it happen. And like could be said in the earlier part of the show, like we're just scratching the surface. It's just the beginning. So my recommendation, my encouragement to you would be create a skill set that allows you to produce income mm -hmm. and start to practice because it's going to take practice, especially if you've had a job for a long time. It's going to take practice. I break it down and kind of make it relatively simple for some of the people that I coach or some of the people that I talk, talk to. I say most businesses, almost all businesses are comprised of like four components, sales, marketing, financials, and operations, right? Those four components, sales, marketing, financials, and operations. How do you transact? What do you transact? How do you add value so that you can receive value, right? You can receive a, re a return for that value that you gave. How, what's the sales mode? Marketing, how do you get more people to hear about you? How do you get more people to pay attention to what you're doing? How do you get the word out to more people? There's a financials component. Obviously, you need to be making a profit. You're not in business to lose money every month, right? Hmm. So things have to be priced accordingly and making sure that someone is paying attention to the money side of things, employees, overhead, yada, yada. And then the operation side, right? How do you actually do it? I uh, One of the books I'm listening to right now is How to Lead by David Rubenstein. Um, and he talks to all the like you know leaders. I'm just, I happen to just get started in it. And build um, um, Amazon, Amazon. What's it? CEO. Uh, oh, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff Bezos. Right. List. I'm listening to Jeff, and one of his like early um, revelations in operations in Amazon was he said they were packing books on the floor. They literally didn't have tables. They were packing, packaging books, putting them into shipping bags and like taking them to the post office. And one day Jeff Bezos says, you know what we need? We need knee pads, right? Knee pads to help us out because my knees are hurting being on the floor. And he said one of his employees looked at him and was like, no, we need packing tables. And he was like, oh, packing tables. <laughs> and, he said, and he said that like quadrupled their business right away. That's operations. That's having an operational standard to understand what needs to happen to make logistics and things better in a business. Those four components. Here's the problem. Most people suck at sales and marketing. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Like most people suck at that. We don't get training on that. We get training to go to school, get a good grades, get a good job, right? We know our work. We know what to do at work, but like we don't know sales. We don't know how to influence someone. We don't know marketing. We don't know how to get more people to hear what we do or bring attention to ourselves. We don't know those things, but it's possible to learn those things. And if you learn those specifically, those two things, sales and marketing, if you specifically learn those and you pick a good industry that you can serve some people that has a good supply and demand arbitrage, you can build a business. That business might not be a seven figure business, but it might bring you in an extra $30,000 a year. <laughs> That's like, we're not talking about everyone being Jeff Bezos. We're talking about you having a skill set where you learn how to earn income for you and your family so you don't have to get laid off again. Mm -hmm. That's the skill set. Those are the things that I would highly encourage people to start to do instead of just looking for the next job where in the next five, seven, 10, 20, 15 years, you potentially get laid off again and put your family right back in the same position. That fully doesn't make sense from a guy that's more entrepreneur minded. I know not everyone is has that entrepreneur mindset just yet, but I think it's worthy of everyone to have because entrepreneur mindset really is just about ownership. Yeah. Your yeah, income, man. ownership of your life. I think that's a very good point and probably requires a full uh, episode later on, uh, which is this concept of uh, ownership that we always talk about. And I'll say one of the things, you know, the other individuals uh, may uh, not be entrepreneurship minded. I think it's because of how they think about entrepreneurship and how they define it and define it in their heads. 
uh, because I talk to a lot of people who ultimately come around to describing some form of entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship, I think, is not what I have kind of discovered for myself is it doesn't have to look the same way for everybody. That's right. Um, you know, you don't need to start your your entire business from scratch. You could take a blueprint from uh, somebody who's already started a successful business and do the same business because one business most likely doesn't serve the entire world. So there's still a good amount of individuals who are looking for that service, that product, or whatever it is that you provide, uh, maybe with somebody that looks like you rather than somebody that looks, you know, like the person you're looking at, or maybe in your particular location, as opposed to somebody else's location. Um, I think this is where it's probably a little bit of confusion. It's like, you don't need to invent something. That's right. right? Uh, to, to start a business. And in fact, that may not be the best way to go. If you're going into business, you might want to find something that's already successful and just duplicate that. Uh, in fact, you know, now that I'm talking, I would say that's probably a better way to go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think you have, it's, a, it's a very good point. And I think a lot of people are fearful because they're like, oh, I'm not an entrepreneur. Da, 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 da. That's fine. You have you have skills. You, right. you do something for your employer, right? So what do you do and what do you do well? And can you do that for others who might appreciate it? I, I, I had a client the other day and um, um, she was talking about how she was doing work at some, some company or whatever. She was in, a corporate athlete and um, she was in charge of kind of doing all of the events for her company. Uh, and then, you know, she was, I guess, doing such a good job that, you know, the, the, the people would recommend her for things. And all of a sudden she like saw that she was, or she was, or could make a lot more money doing that than her regular job. So she quit her job and started doing that full time. And now she, she has, you know, um, 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 freedom in, in the sense of uncapped potential, um, and it, it was a very cool story because you could tell, you know, it, it was, she didn't, did not want to be an entrepreneur. She didn't set out to be an entrepreneur. She just saw an opportunity to leverage her skill set to give her a better, uh, or to, to better create the life that she wanted to create. So, yeah, I thought it was a really cool story and she's doing all these like really cool parties for like really high end individuals and making a lot of money and really enjoying what she's doing. That's it. And that's what I call the definition of the entrepreneur mindset. You know what I mean? Taking ownership of your skills and your talents to earn income. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, however that looks to you, right? Whatever that looks like, it's just not in the context of a job where you could be laid off and then you have to listen to our podcast to give you tips <laughs> on what to do. That's all. Yep. That's all. That's all. Yep. And you don't have to leave your job to start a business. In fact, I would say don't leave until your business is doing well. You shouldn't. <laughs> you, like you shouldn't until you understand how to make money in that business, what what it is that you're doing. Right. You have to understand it. It's not just jump and ship to go over there. There's actual skill sets and things you need to learn. And that's perfectly fine. You should do it while you have a job. Yeah. I, I think that's. That's something I um, have learned over time. And I think that's, uh, it's very tough uh, to tell people that or, or you can kind of, because it, it was tough, tough to tell myself that a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people will probably <laughs> either figure that out for themselves or um, be wise enough to listen to somebody else that's made those mistakes and go from there. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> guys, I think we've given uh -oh. you. I know, uh -oh. right? Yeah, I that's know. about it. That's, that's about it, it ladies that and gentlemen. It. We'll take us home. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm just getting the voice back, right? The yeah. raspy. Jada is in the building. So. There we go. All right, you go ahead and rest up, Jada kids. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you for joining us for another episode of The Good Life, where we teach you how to live a great life, or at least share our experiences from the health and the wealth side. Make sure that you join us live on Wednesdays on our YouTube, um, Instagram, which we didn't do today, but we will. Uh, wherever else you're gonna find us, LinkedIn, 
and uh, make sure you join this group, Facebook group here, because we will be dropping a lot of um, very valuable uh, bonuses and things that we won't be dropping anywhere else, things that are exclusive to the group. So make sure that you join that, join us there and um, keep an eye out. I think this year will be a really, really big year for the group. And uh, we have some some very, very, very exciting things that we are putting into play for those that choose to congregate with us, if you will. Uh, we have workshops coming up really soon. Oh, yes. Oh, workshop. yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, workshop coming up really soon. The only place you're going to be able to find that workshop and that information that could be and I are going to give you is going to be in the Facebook group. So go over to Facebook, get into the group get prepared and get ready for all this great info and insight that's going to help you live that great life. So, yeah. Awesome, man. Another great episode in the books. I'm hyped. Shout out Detroit. And uh, you know what, guys? Make sure that you join us for another great one. And make sure you submit your interest in Detroit facts because I, <laughs> uh, I would love to know all the great things going on in the big Detroit as they set an example for the rest of the community as to how we should behave. All right. <laughs> Thank me later. <laughs> Stand up, Detroit. Eagles Stand up. winning the Super Bowl. Huh? Super Bowl champions. No, nah, no, nah, Detroit Eagles. is – that's the Lions. You got Eagles. the team wrong. No, Eagles. Eagles, though. I just wanted to plug that. Eagles. Oh, oh okay. Just, just, all right. So we plug losing plugging. teams on the show. Huh? Not all right. at all. Winners. Winners all day. <laughs> Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Peace.